Welcome back. We don't have any technical issues. You do. To episode 125 on June 23rd, 2022. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across from me digitally, of course, Alex. Hello, brethren. Now, we definitely didn't just record 15 minutes of blank audio, right? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that clearly didn't happen. I don't know what happened. OBS is freaking out. Luckily, we caught it within a reasonable amount of time to be able to stop that, but that is mm-hmm. hilarious. Alex, so far, knock on wood, that's probably been the biggest issue we've ever had on an episode, right? We haven't yeah. lost an episode yet or anything yep. like that. We've had, we've had audio issues and things of that nature, but yeah. like we haven't had an entire episode lost. Like I've heard horror stories of people. Where, like, mm-hmm. they've just lost an entire episode of content, and it's like, uh, okay. But, knock on wood, that's the worst so far that that's happened. I knocked, and my dog thought there was somebody at the door. <laughs> Stare at the door, I was like, like, cool. <laughs> Alex, so, hmm. usually, I open the thing with a single question. But, we're not doing that yep. this week. We're changing it up. We're doing rapid fire. Dragon's Dogma 2 was announced throughout the, the last week. In the most strange way possible, uh, three men were talking about Dragon's Dogma, the 10th anniversary, and then at the end of the thing, they stood up, took off like their jackets, and showed the shirt and a logo, and said Dragon's Dogma yep. 2 is in development. I was like, yep. So cool. Uh, uh, that's I mean, lit. I mean, I'm excited, but like th- that means they have nothing. Yeah, so they had nothing other than literally a logo and a shirt. So yep. hopefully that comes out sometime. Uh, there's a known issue for Star Wars uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2 on Switch currently. Uh, you are unable to complete it due to a bug at the very end of the game. There is a workaround. Search around online to find it. Uh, it looks like it involves using the cheat menu at a specific point in the game. It all sounded like nonsense to me, so I feel like it'll just be better if you guys just read the ex- explanation for you. PlayStation will not be attending Gamescom 2020. Now, uh, 2022, sorry. Now, this usually would have been an actual news story, Alex, but mm. it is just that. It is nothing else. They did not hint at anything else. They didn't tell or show their hand or, you know, stay tuned for things. They, they said they're not going to be there, and that's it. Hopefully we get something from them this year. Hopefully we get something now. Since we're talking about PlayStation, I feel like it's good to skip a little bit uh, into Room Roundup and just bring up this hardware thing that was leaked by Tom Henderson. This is a, a report he wrote for Experter. Sony is going to uh, unveil three headsets and two monitors uh, within a week, I believe, Alex. Yes, um, it's as of uh, yeah, as of today, it'll be sometime next week. Yeah, so as of today, sometime next week, we're going to get three headsets and two monitors. I could not find much information about the monitors other than that they are being released. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are three headsets, all of them Discord certified, so this probably um, helps them in their partnership with Discord that they have going on. They're uh, releasing three headsets the first one's called in zone h3 it's a wired headset this will be the cheapest one it's these all will have the 360 spatial sound alex did grab the prices because the original report i saw did not have prices it looks like the in zone h3 that i just mentioned will be 100 the next one is called in zone h7 it is a wireless headset of course still with the spatial sound has a great battery apparently with it that's the best battery life out of the three that's 199 and an InZone H9 wireless headset, still, of course, spatial audio. <clears throat> this is going to be the most expensive one. It will have noise-canceling sound, and it's going to sit at $299. Those are super high. Now, they're definitely aiming mm. for premium if these prices are to be believed. Yeah. Uh, Alex, hmm. I think uh, with... We were talking about the in the death episode that we just said. Mm. Um, I think this will most likely be a blog post um mm-hmm. playstation doesn't really care i don't want to say they don't care they don't have huge pomp and circumstances for hardware things they usually just kind of make a blog post about it or they talk about it in some sort of um what would you call the like a very uh professional environment like yeah, yeah what yeah. they did with playstation vr2 where they mentioned it but they didn't show anything or it wasn't very yeah they didn't, do, they didn't set anything. up a whole event for anything it's just something that they posted yeah so i think that will be the same thing with this it will just be 
we'll get a blog post i think what you said the what next week so next week we're gonna get a blog post if the playstation uh pro controller is also to be revealed next week hopefully all of this is at once you get two monitors three headsets and mm-hmm. the pro controller announced of course heavily implied for pc gaming assumably but of course you could use this for your actual playstation system but Correct. this i think they're gonna try and use their pc ground that they're forming currently and now dump hardware on top of that hey we're yep. releasing all of our pc stuff playstation is starting to mean something on pc boom here's a bunch of headsets here's a bunch of monitors here's a fucking 300 hundred dollar controller or however much it's gonna cost <clears throat> Anything from you about these headsets or anything that gets you excited? I mean, they. I mean, they look cool. I'm wondering. I, my worry is, uh, I'm wondering if these are the prices that are supposed to be, and I'm wondering if these headsets are gonna be uh, VR capable. Like, you know, remember there was a set that you can wear the rigs, the white ones. They said that it was like, oh, VR. It, it, you know, it it works well with the VR. VR it, friendly. There's like, yeah, there's like yeah. a notch right here that you can put the the when you put the headset on it goes around it it looks nice it could it looks like it could because it looks like there's like some space right here to make it to where that's where the headset goes so they could be vr friendly it's pretty wise for you to bring up i really did not think about it but yeah they can they can have a whole hardware set like hey works best with psvr2 when it comes out like hey our headsets we made them specifically in mind to have a vr headset on um so yeah that's i honestly didn't think about that that's a good that's a good perspective to get to this because that's probably another thing that they want people to be ready for. Hey, you know, you yep. know what's great with VR headsets. You know what's yep. great? Ours. <laughs> Buy them with the PSVR. Maybe there'll be a spe- special bundle with it too, where you mm-hmm. you get a headset like half off if you buy. Yeah, because it's weird too that they call it in zone. So I'm wondering if maybe like it's trying to say like you know you're getting into the zone things like that. I don't That's know. a good point. Yeah, yeah, that wordplay of some sort with that. Yeah. Microsoft is adding keyboard and mouse support to Xbox Cloud Gaming soon. Xbox devs are being encouraged to add support to the games now, so they will work with xCloud once the integration is ready. I know a lot of people care about xCloud, and also a lot of people care about keyboard and mouse. So, yep. they're bringing that support natively to the thing, so congrats. Congrats. <laughs> maybe they will work on the Samsung app. I doubt it. I don't think it will, but maybe it will. Mm, maybe. Tony Hawk 3 and 4 remasters were apparently thrown out when Vicarious Visions was absorbed into Blizzard. Usually, of course, this would be also another news story we would do, but me and Alex don't have a Tony Hawk background, Hello? so we don't really have... Oh, Alex is gone, I think. He looks... He looks... He looks... <laughs> I know only you two people can see this, but it looks like he is down and out of commission. Oh, it looks like Discord froze on his end. So he will probably be back in a second, but while he's gone, I'm going to continue with the remasters. So he was basically talking with, um, who was he talking with? Uh, oh, I, I think it was IGN, I'm pretty sure. And he was basically saying, hey, it looks like 3 and 4 are thrown out by Vicarious Visions when they're absorbed. And once they're gone, they uh, tried to pitch the game to other studios, and it just didn't work out. Uh, Blizzard seemed to just not want to work with another studio, or they just did not like the pitches in general. But they just weren't into it. So what they did was uh, keep with what they were doing, which is get absorbed, and that's it. They're, they're going to get absorbed. We're not going to see Tony Hawk 3 and 4. Maybe Microsoft, when they uh, finalize this purchase, will have a more concrete way with blizzard that seemed to only go to call of duty at the very end of what they were trying to work with but alex we were just uh going over the tony hawk 3 4 remasters being thrown out as soon as vicarious visions got absorbed i don't think you have too much to say about this because i don't either the studios no, basically I tried used to, to pitch the- this around but no one wanted it i like the tony hawk games but i never was a pro skater guy i was more skate as well yeah uh, just much more skate so maybe this yeah. will change when xbox finishes the acquisition maybe they'll get them going somewhere else or maybe they'll de-absorb vicarious uh, uh, from blizzard so who, who knows but yeah. uh sticking with xbox they did state that there is a controller shor- shortage currently the biggest disruption seems to be in europe uh, so if you're having issues obtaining a controller that is why so if you need one try to get it now before it gets too bad where you are 
Horizon Forbidden West, uh, this is just a fun one that I uh, brought up. It reclaimed its number one physical spot in the UK sales this week, overtaking Mario Strikers. I found this on uh, gamesindustryabout.biz. I just thought it was interesting that not only did it overtake Mario Strikers, it is now, what, a four-month-old game? And it overtook mm-hmm. a game that came out last week, pre- pretty much. So I just thought it was cool, and it's compelling. Now, this was probably a sale or probably got a little cheaper and it just you know that i mean because i mean mario what is mario strikers good i haven't heard anything really about it uh i think mario strikers is mario strikers i think it's just that's the game people want yeah so that's what they got <laughs> so cool I, I i think people like it i i think it's the the problem with seemingly every nintendo game where the online is bad yeah so that's just that's just clearly never going to change with nintendo they mm. don't care about online, or if they do, they sh- don't know how to show it. So, yeah, you strikers, remember what you did, but, uh, the the chat when it was online for like Splatoon, you had to use the phone app thing. Yep, that's true. Yeah, that is a true fact. You had to use a phone app to chat with other people. Uh, that and there was another game too. I think that you had to use that for. I think it was Mario Kart, maybe. I think because I know it's Splatoon two, and then I think it was Mario Kart. Yeah, because there's no native party chat. So basically, yeah. they told you to call people. Um, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and, and Fortnite is, I believe, the only... Eh, there might be a few other games, but it's the majority game where they, they have party chat on there. But yeah. that is Fortnite's chat, not Nintendo's, which is pretty yeah. hilarious. Uh, all of your Overwatch currency will transition to Overwatch 2. The only thing that will not transition is loot boxes. If you try to transition that, it will automatically open for you, apparently. So... Your league coins and the things you pay for should transition. There is going to be a new way that they work with cosmetics into. They haven't gone into it yet, but there you go. Oh, that's from Roundup. No, sorry. That mm. is um, Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire. For the week. Thank you so much. Now, I usually open hmm. the show with a singular question, but I'm changing it up this week. What have you been playing? Assassin's Creed. Yes. Uh, ever since the ever Day since Job the origin of Day or FPS, uh, the FPS boost and things like that, I'm like, well, man, I still need to finish Valhalla. So went back to Valhalla DLC, finished Seeds of Paris, and now started the Dawn of Ragnarok DLC. Same. You? I went back, went to Ireland, enjoyed my time there, Dublin specifically. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really, I really enjoyed these DLCs. Surprisingly, I'm usually not super into the DLCs just because. Usually when you get to it, it's been so long, you barely remember the game. I shockingly yeah. remembered the game pretty yeah. fast. So I was shocked about that. So Does I played that say something good about Valhalla. Yeah. The only thing bad yeah. is that horrendous skill tree. Horrendous. <laughs> Terrible. Oh my god. Terrible. You should not have five hundred levels in a game. You just that should not be a thing. Just awful. So uh, aside from that, yeah, it was a fun time to come back. Uh I did enjoy uh i enjoy that any weapon is pretty good so like you don't Mm -hmm. you don't really have to use anything like you 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 want to use a sword and a shield you can you'll you'll be fine you want to use double giant axes you definitely can speaking of double you're gonna think it's funny there's a an achievement on the recent dlc it says you have to dress up as a the reaper outfit yeah and you gotta kill somebody with the with the scythe i did that you told me about this one Yeah, yeah yeah i did that but I was dueling scythes. I had two scythes. <laughs> yeah. so I'm running around with two scythes. Dressed as the Reaper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly when you have two oh, yeah. scythes running around. Uh, whenever you're dueling two two-handed weapons, you look pretty nuts. Because you can yeah. duel two-handed axes. So you have these massive axes and you're just like tearing people up and i forgot how gruesome the um animations were in this like when you do like stun attacks there's one where you cut like someone's arms off and throw an axe at their head to finish them off it's kind of wild Mm -hmm. uh so i that it was nice to go back i do like avor as a character i also went back to odyssey to do the free mission they added to that kazadra is my probably my favorite character in assassin's creed so like that was really fun to go back to and then i did the crossover they did with those two characters in valhalla that was really fun that was also free um i need to step aside just for a second i'll be right back just keep talking to the achievers no you're good 
But that's really what I've been playing. I dipped my toes into Persona 5 Strikers because when that came out, I w was not in that headspace for that game. I just wasn't in the mood for Persona 5 Strikers. So I went back to that and I got to say, I'm very confused on how the game works. Now, maybe it's a difficulty thing or I'm just not doing something right. But I feel like I'm draining way too much SP when I'm fighting, which uh, SP is, you know, magic points or whatever. You know, insert magic points like from Final Fantasy or whatever into SP. So it's the same thing. But when I'm playing Persona 5 Strikers, it's just so strange because I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Because I'll, I'll go, I'll enter like this most recent boss battle I did. And, I, and this is the first boss battle in the game, like the major one where you where you change someone's heart's desires in this game. I was fighting this boss and I was doing good up to a point but then i all my characters died and all i was out of sp so i changed up my combat a little bit to fight her weaknesses a little bit and i got past the point where i died but i still barely finished it like i had my, my uh the main character joker the last person left it was just that person with no heals and the other uh boss was at like a tiny little sliver of health but so was i so it was basically like let me plink plonk her until she dies and it took an additional probably five minutes just to do that because i did not run to restart the mission but achievers if there's something i may be missing or if it's i'm just at the beginning of the game is just it's meant to be that hard because the to show a progression when you do have the game down let me know if you know what to do because when i'm playing the game i do feel like i'm doing something wrong like so i feel like something i'm doing is just not working so i get kind of lost halfway through i'm like i'm fighting these thousands of people or and people you know the the shadows i'm fighting them all and i'll beat them and those are fine sometimes i die and even like the mini boss battles too which is strange like i'll just get nuked like really fast before i can react so i just feel like i'm playing the game wrong maybe i just need to mess with the difficulty or maybe i just need to just get good which is possible they could just have to get good so i don't know i'll figure it out let me know if you've played persona 5 strikers already or if you're going back to it now and let me know if if you're having a similar experience. Are you getting your ass beat like I am? Because I've again, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. But I've played these games my almost my whole life. I played Dynasty Warriors a lot. Now this isn't too much like Dynasty Wars, but I played both those games a good bit. I should have an understanding of this, and I just feel like I am not. I'm not doing it good. Maybe I was just under level two. Who knows? But let's get into the dog of the week. So this is gonna be a heavy one, achievers. So strap in. A lot of politics into this one. Blizzard seems to have had to delay the launch of Diablo Immortal in China. The reason? Well, if you believe the publisher, they need more time to optimize the experience of the game to multiple devices to improve rendering quality. Now, the actual reason? Well, the official account for Blizzard on Weibo, the biggest social media site in China, made a post saying, and this is a translation that I have found coming Several sites, a, a few people gave me different translations, so I don't know which one to go with because I don't speak Mandarin. So I'm going to give you two translations, one from Kotaku and one from, um, uh, was it, it was it Business Insiders? I think it was Business Insiders. Uh, I'll check after this, but after combing through multiple articles. Why hasn't the bear stepped down? While well, other articles like Kotaku translated to what do you think about the bear? But it's meant to be idiomatic, of course, like a saying. A little background uh, for people that might wonder why in China is it offensive to talk about a bear. In China, Winnie the Pooh is commonly used to make fun of the current president. Let's put that in quotes. And head of the Chinese Communist Party, Jin, uh, Xi Jinping. Alex, now I know you're not uh, very much into politics, so... Mm -hmm. Comments, if you will, on this. We're on the first uh, episode with China and Blizzard situation that they found themselves in. So, it, Diablo Immortal, uh, yeah. I'll talk to the achievers. Chime in if you want to. But it seems like uh, they were put in the no no corner in China. Uh, it seems mm -hmm. like they referenced a bear. It's unclear if they meant this to be Winnie the Pooh specifically. If you remember Xi Jinping, there is a common meme that you use to make fun of Xi Jinping as Winnie the Pooh. He does not like mm -hmm. that, so a lot of people do it. 
Uh, and yeah. if that sounds mean, remember this is the guy that has concentration camps for Muslims in his country and pretends like he does not do that. They are concentration camps and they what are you re about? and they re-educate people. So and that's like millions of people. They have pictures of it online if you want to go see it. I'm not crazy. People aren't making this up. And he regularly disappears people, billionaires and these in this nature, anyone that's critical of him. Uh, they will make them disappear for a few months and uh, do God knows what to them. And then they come back out uh, singing a different tune, to say the least. So, uh, honestly, Blizzard, hey, this is your fault. All right, you, This is what happens. You deal with China, you have to dis so, so, uh, reap what you sow. You want to deal with them? Come with the consequences, brother. Uh, it reminds me of um, when they had the uh, Hong Kong situation where they had to, <laughs> when they had the guy acknowledging hong kong and uh when they were uh, fighting back against uh the uh chinese um i mean ba basically occupation of hong kong and when, when they were fighting back the, uh when they were doing the hearthstone tournament they when they said free hong kong and they had to like completely disavow this dude from trying to save his country so hey F hard to say i feel bad for you blizzard moving on Producer Nayuki Yoshida, known for his work in Blazing Souls in 2012 and Cross Edge, sat down with IGN in a very similar interview like we had last week with Starfield to talk about Final Fantasy 16. With detailing the most recent trailer, Yoshida-san says, quote, We didn't want to overwhelm users in our newest trailer, so we focused on Clive. Clive will be accompanied by one, of, one or more of his companions, but they will be AI-driven. And uh, I did shorten out that quote, so it's not exact, but that is mm. uh, roughly what he said. So, Alex, I, you're mm, you're probably a more common Final Fantasy fan, I would say. Like, you haven't played them okay. all, but you played yeah. mo a lot of the modern ones. So, right off the yeah. cuff, what do you think about the... It's not like Final Fantasy VII Remake where you're, like, able to switch between people and you utilize things. It looks like yep. you're playing as Clive and everyone else are... Yeah. Mm. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't mind. I mean, um, in Final Fantasy 15, can you change to the other two or you're only Noctis? I can't remember. I think you're only Noctis, right? Pretty sure you're only Noctis. Because I know there's DLC where you play as the other guys. Yeah, but... pretty sure you're only Noctis. Okay, Almost and see, fine. I mean, and see, I was fine with that. I mean, I don't mind being the soul character as long as, uh... Like, for example, like in Kingdom Hearts, like, you know how it, you can't be Donald and Goofy, but you can change what kind of like what they do. So be like, oh, you they're heavy, you know, they're attack heavy or they're just, you know, defense. As long as I could do just something like that, they're just not strictly be like, I can't mess with them at all. Then I, I feel like it's fine. Yeah, I, this is one of those wait and see things uh, on paper. Yeah. I don't really care, but as long as the combat seems fluid because it's mm -hmm. not turn based. So it's going to be an action yeah. kind of combat. I as it's not an open world not an open world we'll get into that too continuing with talks on the combat final fantasy 16 yeah. is a completely new game with a completely different concept this is a quote sorry quote in order to take the series in a new direction rather than build off old battle system translating traditional summon abilities into player actions and allowing for the real-time swapping and changing of these abilities in battle has allowed us to create a system that not only looks great but feels good to play end quote so that sounds pretty sick so they are going to make summon abilities into actual player actions. It looks like we saw a little bit of that in the trailer That's where cool. so many uh, summons come up in the trailer. Yeah, that reminded me of the very um, what was it called? Uh, oh God, I don't remember what the game was called, but it reminded me of the the Godzilla type game where like two giant monsters fight each other, and they have like health bars and things. It looks like almost a kaiju gotcha. fighting game basically with these two summons so they and they'll bring this up later again that it looks like they're making these things a bigger part of your fight versus a mm. thing you summon and they do like a big ass move and then they go away and yeah and see i think that i think it's like it's kind of similar like when it says a traditional translating traditional summon battles into player actions I, I think maybe like you're like in the middle of battling or whatever and you have a, let's say you have uh, you can only have a certain summon equipped at the time. So let's say Ifrit, because everybody knows Ifrit. Yeah. Let's say that you're doing a certain ability, you're doing something, you're, you have a gauge, that gauge is fully up, and then you can do kind of like an alt. 
and then you do like a sort of alt ability, and then that's when Ifrit comes out, do, does some crazy fire move, does some stuff, and then he goes away, and then you're back to normal, a bunch of doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious if this is gonna be my like, is this a is this a peak I'm trying to reach during combat, yeah. and then once that happens, I do it again, or the fight's yeah. over, or is this a halfway point, and that will help me finish the fight? I'm I'm I'm, I'm curious how how much it's integrated into the actual play. Speaking around some of the design philosophy of the game, quote, the development concepts for Final Fantasy XIV and Final Fantasy XVI are inherently different. By the way, the reason they're bringing this up is because they have so many people, specific producers from Final Fantasy XIV on this game. So he's basically specifying the differences between the two. Final Fantasy XVI does something that no Final Fantasy before has. It's taken aspects of the entire series, incorporated them in what we call a Final Fantasy theme park. However, while that is a Final Fantasy XIV uh concept it is not a specific and this is the name of their studio business unit three development team characteristic end quote which is a hilarious way of calling your studio like maybe just figure out a name or something instead of calling yourself business unit uh, three but you do you guys final fantasy 16 is its own entity separate from final fantasy 14 and the other games in the series so you won't find as many tributes as you will in final fantasy 14 sidebar i feel like that is a given because 14 is an mmo whereas 16 is a standalone game all the other final fantasies have before so maybe he's just making sure people understand that if you're coming from 14 into this this is nothing like the other games, maybe. so yeah. maybe that's what he was doing here but i got a little confused on what he meant here but that's probably what he was doing he's like making sure like hey if you're coming from 14 to 16 because you see people's names are the same be careful yeah. the final fantasy um uh, event we will talk about in a second but actually uh alex do you have anything to wrap up uh final fantasy 16 what's what's the excitement level do you uh, are you excited at all like i said i feel like you represent the majority of the achievers so, where you haven't really played all of them but you played most of the yeah. modern ones so you have a similar perspective well most of the ones that i've played i've enjoyed i haven't really had one i haven't had one final fantasy game where i was like this is terrible yeah I mean, like, even I even just tried playing Strangers of Paradise Final Fantasy, and that wasn't that's it's not terrible. Like, be, be, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, it's it's <laughs> a lot. If you like Neo, okay, the hack and slash mission to mission type, you know, kind of Souls born, you know, type of combat, it's it's like that. It's not terrible. I had fun with it, but I just I rather I was I wanted to play something else. Yeah. I had fine. I had fun with my time. I haven't really had a bad Final Fantasy game. So, I mean, I, people hate 13. I like 13. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so with 16, I, I feel like I'm in a good spot to where I was like, I'm probably going to like it. So I'm, I'm setting my bar is kind of like at a, at a, at a like even. I must, it's not low, so I don't get disappointed if it is bad. But it's not, or excuse me, the other way. It's not high, so like if it is bad, I'll get disappointed or the other way. So I think I'm just right in the middle. Okay. I... I feel have, like if you like Final Fantasy and you've liked all the games, you'll probably like this one. I have high hopes, but it doesn't look super Final Fantasy to me so far. The okay. summons look great. I love the summons. Summons do invoke Final Fantasy very much. It does have a very similar art style, at least to me, about Final Fantasy XV, especially near the end of the game mm -hmm. in Final Fantasy XV. Um, people who've beaten the game will understand what I mean yes. by that. It looks yes. a lot <laughs> like that. So... And see, it, that's what I was like. We haven't seen much of we this game. We've only we just had a trailer, and I was like, we haven't gotten gameplay, but like, oh, okay, this is the world of Final Fantasy 16. We haven't seen that trailer yet. So I'm, um, I, and, ooh, excuse me. And, um, that's what I'm just waiting for. So to see, I'm like, okay, so how is, is this going to be more like a Final Fantasy 15 type of game, or is it going to be a Tales of Arise Final Fantasy game? Like the word, you know, it's it's not as big. Hmm. They did mention it was not going to be open world. Yep. And they and they said it in a very firm fashion, right? It's going to be. So, is, so what does that mean, though? Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. Are they, are they keeping the mission to mission thing like they did with Strangers Paradise, or are they? Gonna, is this going to so. be a linear, linear thing, or is it sandboxy, just less, like smaller than God of War? I want to say like, it's going to be closer to thirteen minus the end. So remember okay. in 13, okay. you, yeah. I mean, it was 
pretty it was kinda, much like, mission to mission. Kind of linear. It, well, it was like, you know, you can walk, you have kind of like a little area you could run around, but it's not crazy. Kind of like, uh, I mean, even Final Fantasy X did that. Like yeah. where you you have your own open area, but you can run around, but it's not open world. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure it'd be closer to that than yeah, I can see that. anything else. I'm kind of happy it's not open world, just like just because we, yeah, like we, so we, yeah, so we just have so much. We just have so much. Say, like it's open world with year. I mean, like <laughs> if you if you're disappointed that this is an open world, trust me, there's plenty of other world games you can play. You can go play Final Fantasy 15. That was open world, so enjoy yeah. that. Yep. You can uh, be on the regala. Yeah, on the regala, you can uh, eventually fly that thing. Remember that? I could, <laughs> that just came back to me. I was like, wait, that cha- that that could. I remember that change into a uh, a plane. That was crazy. And uh, uh, remember when they had the Assassin's Creed crossover? Uh, that part was fun. I kind of like. No, I did too. It's just I, yeah. wow that that happened. Uh, yeah. Assassin's Creed. I think Origins, that was the time. Uh, that, too. that was the t- yeah. That was the time where they had an Assassin's Creed event in in Final Fantasy. Yeah. And then they had a little mission for it in Origins, vice versa. Yep. Yeah, they, they traded. It was it was cool. We don't see that yeah. really ever. That so that was cool that that happened. Yeah. But yeah, that's all I have really to say about sixteen. I am I'm right there with you. I'm excited. But we haven't seen much. So I, I wanna see yeah. a little more and also I wanna see something different. We've seen that night at night wherever they are like very dark area clear you know clearly they're at night we've seen like bigger summons but like let's let's get some like diversity where am i going you know where's this where's this setting gonna take me how vast is the environments i'm gonna be in etc really quick yeah which final fantasy was it that we got that terrible gameplay trailer where it was like the big dude and he kept trying to like punch down at the guy but the guy just kept getting hit and stuff and he was just terrible like sorry but he looked so- he looked like he was terrible at the game was that 15 or because we didn't see that we haven't seen anything for 16 so i must i think that was 15 it was kind of like in a deserty area it had to have been because i can't remember anything else uh, that would have that because in- I, I remember talk i remember we were watching that and i was like why does this look terrible and then i mean the game came out and i was like we loved it yeah, I think you're talking about this big stone guy you fight in the game. Yes. yes. Yeah, I don't remember. I, this this sounds like a memory that just popped out of nowhere. I I don't I I faintly remember what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um I just can't remember the demo that you're saying. I remember this gentleman. Is he like a called Gorgon or something? <sighs> something like that. Remember. He was a giant stone thing and you had to fight it or whatever. Let's see. Yeah, see if you- I just Season yeah, because I remember them showing it off, and the and the person who was playing the game was fighting it, but like it was just like we were we're looking at it, we're like, what is happening? Why? What? <laughs> it was just was so weird, and I was like, this game. I really hope this game is because like they were showing off the mechanics or whatever, and I was like, we really hope it's it doesn't seem this bad, but it wasn't. Oh, I can't. I can't find it. Yeah, if if Alex finds that, he'll chime back in. Let's move on to the Final Fantasy event that did not go as expected as uh, yes. me and Alex thought it would last week. If you listened to us last week, uh, you you definitely were surprised as we were. Final Fantasy VII Remake was not announced to be coming to other platforms other than PC, so it will be coming to PC. Um, and technically, it's remake integrated, so you'll get the Yuffie stuff too. But what was announced was Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is going to be a continuation of the story of Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Final Fantasy VII Reunion, which is going to be a remaster of the Crisis Core game for the PSP, and it's going to be remastered for current-gen consoles. That game will be coming in a very Square Enix way to Xbox, PC, PS5, and Switch. Very strange. Uh, that that's coming, but not the other ones. Clearly, PlayStation has some sort of exclusivity deal with them to not launch remake on other platforms. At least as of yet, maybe and not until the trilogy came out. And that's another thing that came out that they announced that this that remake, um, rebirth, and then the third game is going to be a trilogy because they never technically said that before. They didn't know if it was going to be three mm-hmm. or four or even five games. So now we know for sure it's three games. Rebirth is going to come out next winter. This winter is a reunion, and then the third game, whatever. Uh, and I'll name these really quick, because I know me and Alex don't care about this. Final Fantasy VII, the first soldier, will have a collab with uh, Crisis Core. 
and Ever Crisis, which is a single-player episodic mobile game that follows the story um, of the original uh, Final Fantasy VII, was shown off as well. All right, Alex, Final hmm. Fantasy VII Rebirth. Did you finish the remake? So I I did finish the remake. I did not go back for the integrate integrate yeah. thing. Yeah, I did not. But I did either. Finish, I did finish. I did finish the game though. Okay, so you so you understand. So you are you, you're excited for Rebirth. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely want to. Tr- I definitely want to continue the story and see where all that takes place. I wasn't expecting it to be three parts, though. I thought it was going to be just part one and part two because that's why I felt like it was always speculating. I'm not too uh, shocked. Uh, um, almost uh, because I believe the original Final Fantasy VII game was on three discs, so it's fitting mm, that the game right. is set out through three. I'm okay. pretty sure it was three discs, so that's pretty cool. Um. Uh, and again, I'm pretty sure. Remind, remind me if I'm wrong. It, it, was it four discs? I'm pretty sure it was three. Remind me, Achievers. I if don't I, remember. No, I never... <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. The Achievers will tell me if I'm wrong. But Rebirth, I'm very excited for. I have not played the original Final Fantasy VII, so I am in a very strange place where clearly this game is redoing the story. Like, they're remaking the story. So it's going to be a different take. I do need to play Final Fantasy VII before this game because I just, I really think you are meant to have played the original game before playing this. Although I don't think you have to. You very much should to really understand what's going on. So I want to go back. Alex, honestly, what I'm most excited for is playing Crisis Core, but beautified. Like that game looks awesome. Yeah, I've never played Crisis Core. <laughs> it's super good, dude. It is really good. It, is, it was on the PSP. I, that was my first game I played on my PSP, actually. Uh, was crisis core and i loved that game it was really cool the um i remember loving the cinematics they have like a th- uh, a three fight between um three characters that is one of the coolest things i had ever seen at the time like teenage Al- uh, elijah was freaking out like i was like this is the coolest thing ever so i enjoyed it i cannot wait for crisis core uh i don't really have too much else because rebirth it looks interesting there was a scene with cloud walking with sethroth that i was like what the fuck is happening there like are, are they maybe it's a flashback or something i don't know but that was kind of weird uh, maybe you work with sephiroth at some point in the game i don't know but who knows that that's all i have to say uh yeah i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited to try crisis core and um this winter so you won't have long yeah, yeah. if that's true technically this winter i think technically ends like in february so you could have a while still Summer Game Fest has had a record-breaking year, bringing in a record 27 million global live streams. Pretty impressive. Now, that is stretched across all their um, live streams, and I think they count double-ups. I don't know if that's unique viewers, but I wanted to give them a shout-out. Congratulations to them. They continue to improve every year. Kind of. (laughs) Date updates. Um, Really quick, uh, Skate 4 is set to be revealed in July. This is according to Tom Henderson yeah, over yeah, on yeah. TryHard Guys. Very excited about this. We did see that leak. Um, I think it was last month that they showed the the leak of the uh skate like n- like there were like almost no features, but they were but someone leaked yeah, the yeah. actual gameplay of Skate 4. Mm. And it looks pretty good. So I'm kind of excited for this uh this I mean really our first look at the game. I mean, really. It, it, we haven't really seen anything about the game, so it is set to be shown. Tim Anderson, again, I, I believe a lot of that guy. So I, I think it's going to be coming. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Expansion Pass was announced. It's 30 bucks. It'll launch a sign of the game. There was a Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Direct that you can go watch if you want to know more about this. Go check that out. There's a new Assassin's uh, Creed game that will be announced in September. Me and Alex are very excited about that. Yep. And every time a new month is close to be starting at xbox game pass debuts what's coming to game pass upcoming so let's go over that right now so available right now shadow run trilogy is cloud console total war three kingdoms is going to be on pc uh fifa 22 june 23rd so as of recording you'll get this um that is going to be on game pass narika Playpoint, alex a game you're very excited about is out right now mm. cloud console and pc <sighs> you can play that right now 
Came out yeah, today. I, it. I want to. I want to check it out. Yep, and I want to read this. Narika Blood Point is an up to sixty player mythical action combat experience with martial arts inspired melee combat, gravity defying mobility, vast arsenals of melee and ranged weapons, legendary customizable heroes with epic bat abilities inspired by the legends of the Far East. Looks pretty cool. I'm kind mm-hmm. of excited. And starting off the uh, starting off next month, July first, Far Cry Five coming to cloud console and PC. And of course, uh, oh, this is the in case you missed it section, and that is that's a pretty short one this week because that is everything. And then let's go over what's leaving. Of course, if uh, everything that leaves, remember, if it leaves, you can buy it at a discount for twenty percent off. It's FIFA twenty uh, console and PC, Jurassic World Evolution console and cloud, Last Stop cloud console and PC, Moto GP twenty. By June thirtieth, all of these games that I've previously listed will be gone if you'd like to again you can uh get a discount of 20 percent off to keep them in your library um and also as a reminder fifa 20 is leaving but you'll be getting 22 jurassic world evolution is leaving but alex correct me if i'm wrong here world evolution 2 is on game pass so not too much of a loss there almost positive it is with uh jurassic world evolution yeah no it's it's on there yeah so so not too too much of a loss this month Two of those games have their sequels on the platform, so not not mm-hmm. too big of a deal. You could just go play those. That is the news for the week. Shorter episode this week. We didn't really have too much to digest. It was a good bit of rumors, a good bit of speculations. Alex will be doing me a huge favor in stitching this into the other episode, so nothing should be different for you at home, but <laughs> for us, it will be a very interesting thing of uh, playing Stitch together and figuring yep, out how I've- to fix that. Yep, thank God Premiere is easy to use. Alex, I start every single week with a singular question, and I end the show with a singular question. What do you have keyed up for the week? Now, of course, this could be a TV show, a movie, a comic book, a book, a game, maybe a play, podcast, anything. Mm. What do you have keyed up for the week? So I, I saw that Umbrella Academy is out, so Came I will be watching like yesterday. that. I did not know that yep. until I, like... I was not aware of this. Yeah, I saw, like, a tweet or something. I don't even remember. Yeah. And it said June 22nd, and I was like, that's today. <laughs> and I went to Netflix. Yeah, I tried watching it, and my app would not work. It was my app on my tv it kept crashing so i was like maybe it's crashing because people are watching this so much i don't know so i just bowed out and i'm gonna try and watch it today so i'm very very excited for that i am catching up on the boys that's another thing i'll be watching which is a great show crazy ass show but it's great hey, yeah i need to i'm gonna wait until they're fully out and then i'm gonna watch it all respect respect that. i think yeah. i think the boys is almost done because i think episode six is out so only two more weeks and then they're all out. So that's pretty soon. And then um, aside from that, I'll be playing Persona 5 Strikers. I will hopefully be back to Assassin's Creed Valhalla to finish out the Dawn of Ragnarok DLC that, that is out. I yeah, heard it's what I'm going to be playing. I heard it's pretty crazy. So I want to do play that like you can be an eagle and things and there's crazy abilities that you can get. So I do want to definitely play that. Um, aside from that, that's everything I have like off of the top of my head that I definitely want to get to. I'm sure I will play something by the time we come back uh, next week that I can. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, and I'll give my thoughts on the Nanaka. Uh, Nakara. Yeah, yeah. Let I, me know. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know if I like it too. If I like it, I'll download it too. Yeah. And uh, uh, Alex, just to let the achievers know, you will be gone mm. pretty soon. To yep. become to take care of a youngling. To become dad numero dos yep so uh, alex will be gone for probably around the same time he was gone last night about a month and a half two months really it's as long as you can because now you got two to deal with yeah just the yeah, one last time yeah. so now you got two congrats by the way yeah i'm, I'm done <laughs> so don't be surprised honestly he could be gone next week so we really uh, at this point who knows so yeah we will see Thank you so much for joining us this week. We don't really have too much else to divulge on, so Actually, we're just gonna. It's a fancy thing, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, 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 I re- almost re- remember what you're talking about. Which game it is? But you're. It's like it was a Final Fantasy gameplay reveal that they were showing off, and it was a guy literally playing, and it was, I forget. It was like a kind of like in a desert arena kind of thing, and it was like a big stone guy, and he was just starting. He was just hitting around. And like he just kept the guy kept getting hit, and we were looking at it, it was like <laughs> we were like 
this guy either sucks at the game or the mechanics are wonky. Yeah, I I I faintly remember I this. I'm remember sure there's an achiever out there that's like, oh I, yeah, I, I definitely remember that. Which game I'm talking about, but yeah, Pretty whoever sure that game is, we were really like skeptical about it. And then whenever the game came out, we were like, oh, it's good. Yeah, this is something. Well, uh, maybe some achiever will will know where that is. Because I again, I know what you're talking about. I I can't. I'm I sure I could remember. not find that for the life of me. Yeah, I, I can't even. I can't even find it. I put. I, I typed in first gameplay reveal. Of, I tried all Final Fantasy 15 stuff. So I I'm hoping it's that one, but I don't know. Let us know if you guys find it home. We are gonna go play some video games. Yep. Until we talk to you again. Remember, go chief. Go chief.